which is best, the new Volkswagen Golf R or the new Audi S3? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. I'm going to talk you through their exterior design, show you their interiors, compare their practicality, try out their tech, take them for a hoon around our track, and of course, launch them to see which is quickest from 0 to 60 miles an hour. It's going to be... Wunderbar! Yeah. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this comparison by comparing the car's prices. And this is going to surprise you. You see, in the first time in history, I think, the Audi S3 is actually less expensive than the Golf R. It starts at just under £38,000, whereas this Golf starts at just over £39,000. That's based on list price, though. You see, the average car wow discount on a Golf R is about £3,700, whereas on the S3, it's £2,700, so grand more off on the Golf. So it all comes out in the wash. They're pretty much the same price when you buy them through a car wow trusted dealer. So it's not really helping with the comparison, is it? Let's move on. Looks like we're starting off with a level playing field. So we're gonna try and differentiate these cars, starting with their design here at the front. I know this is a subjective thing, but really the Audi is the better looking car. It's a fact because the new Mark 8 Golf just has that kind of like monobrow or like migraine look to it. It's just like, oh, I've got a banging headache. Whereas that just looks cooler. It's true, it does. I don't care what you say, stop commenting, it's better. It's a different story around the back. Prefer the flatter, square shape of the Golf's arse rather than the more voluptuous rear end of the Audi. I also can't forgive Audi for these fakey, venti bits either here. Mm. From the side though, it's the Audi that looks the best. It's just got a bit more going on. It seems posher, whereas the Golf is a touch ordinary. And so overall, I think the Audi S3 is the better looking of the two cars. The Audi definitely feels the most luxurious here on the inside as well. Just the materials, the fact you've got leather seats as standard, they're really nice actually, these sports seats. The steering wheel feels expensive as well. The design is just more interesting, more modern feeling. I like the huge screens that you get, really, really crisp display for the digital dials. And thank God, normal buttons for the climate control, just so much easier to use than some fiddly touchscreen or what have you. It's a nice car to sit in this. There is only one thing that I find a bit odd, I don't know why they did it, is this Odd stitching in the dash there. Look like someone like vandalised it. Oh my God, I better sew that up quickly. The journalists will never know. Inside, the Golf R isn't horrible, but it feels like a car from the class below, and that's no more evident than in the seats. Look at these seats compared to the ones in the Audi. And the material, like that's a budget car, not something that costs like almost 40 grand. Mm. Then there's the materials, which are a bit A little bit cheaper feeling, not terrible, but just not as nice as in the Audi. Steering wheel is the same, really. It's nice enough, but it just has that kind of like cheapy feel to it with the plastic bits on it. I'm not sure what they're doing here with these big gear selector paddles. They sort of remind me of Batman's wings, or maybe one of his tools or something. You whip that off and throw it at somebody. Another thing I'm not so keen on is the way you have to control like the volume with the slider switch and the temperature with these slider switches here. Go away. Oh, and now I've got the blooming fan blowing away. How do I stop that now? Stop it! Oh! <laughs> this makes you want to punch it. The screens are sharp, but the graphics are just more childish than in the Audi. You can cycle through different views. In fact, there's more than in the Audi. But I do hate the way you use these touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel. They're, they're also annoying as hell. There's lots of blue ambient lighting though, which is quite nice. As though you left the Bluetooth on your stereo or something like that. It's just glowing away in the background definitely prefer the interior of the Audi. Here in the back of the Golf R, the box is square shape, means good headroom, good knee room. You've also got a big back window, which gives you a good view out. You don't get such a good view forward because of these seat backs, the way you've got the integrated headrest. And check this out. I mean, how cheap is that bit of plastic there? <laughs> to be fair, Audi has cheaped out a little bit with the materials here in the back of the S3 as well. Look, scratchy, scratchy. It wasn't like that in the previous S3. In fact, I think that all VW Group cars now are a little less quality feeling than their predecessors. I'm not sure if that's to do with the fact that they've had to pay such huge fines for Dieselgate or because they're investing so much in electric car technology as well that they're having to cut some costs somewhere. Anyway, that's the only bit that feels cheap in the back of here. These leather seats are lovely, much nicer than the ones in the back of the Golf. And even though you also have integrated headrests like in the Golf R, they're just a bit narrower, so you do get a better view out, which is a good job because the rear window isn't so big and it just seems a little bit more claustrophobic in here than in the back of the golf but still look headroom's fine room's fine 
Well, the S3's passenger space is identical to the normal A3's. There is a compromise when it comes to the boot. You see, because of the all-wheel drive system, the rear differential or something, the boot capacity is 65 litres less than the standard car at 325 litres. When you do lift up at the fourth floor, you're greeted to that, not even any carpet. I thought this was an Audi. Maybe that's the um, Dieselgate finds taking a toll again. The Golf R's boot is also slightly smaller than the standard cars, but only by 7 litres at 374 litres. So it's a bit more practical. Underneath here, it seems to have a similar amount of space to the tree, so I don't know where the extra litres in the Golf are. What it does have that the Audi doesn't have, carpet. They bothered to carpet this one. Thank you, Volkswagen. I like that, the way that stays up like that. The Audi has that feature too. Both cars also have the same all-wheel drive system, which apparently can send 100% of the power to the rear wheels, like that, as soon as the fronts start to lose traction. However, while they both also have a front electronically controlled limited slip differential, the Golf goes one better by having one at the rear, and it can torque vector to send power to the rear wheel with the most grip. You can even get this car with a drift mode if you pay Volkswagen an extra £2,000 for the performance pack which also includes some slightly larger wheels by one inch, so 19s instead of these 18s, and a special Nürburgring mode for the stability control and stuff for going as quick as you can around the Norwich life. It's useful. The Audi is also a little bit lacking in the old brakes department. You see, it has 340 millimetre discs, whereas the Golf has 370 millimetre front discs. Also this caliper there, it's only got one piston in it, when the Golf has two. So I'm not sure how that's gonna affect the braking performance when I do the brake test in a bit, because don't forget this car has larger wheels with a slightly larger contact patch because of its bigger tires. Now let's talk about engines, because once again, it's the same, but ever so slightly different. So to get into the point of the Golf, you have to use your own muscle power to lift the bonnet up. Right, with the Audi, look at this, much posher. You've got gastro, and look, red bits on the engine cover, wonderful. But it doesn't really matter when you realise they both have two litre capacity, four cylinder, single turbo each, but this engine puts out 310 horsepower and 400 newton metres of torque, whereas this one, puts out 320 horsepower and 420 newton metres of torque. In terms of weight, 1,551 kilograms, 1,575 kilograms. How will that affect their acceleration? Well, we're going to find out because I'm going to launch them. I'm going to launch the Audi. What are you going to do? That's a weird gear change. What do we get? 0 to 16 4.5 seconds. It's not too bad. All right, now I'm going to compare the braking performance from 70 miles an hour. I'm going to do a full emergency stop. Here we go. Whew, press so hard, it actually hurt the soles of my feet. Let's see what we did. It stopped in just 43 meters. That's really good. Okay, let's see what this Audi S3 is like to drive. I've got it in sports mode and I'm changing gears myself. Though, if I rev it, I'm in manual mode. Should it? No, it should just ba 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 off the red line, but it won't let me. It automatically changes up. You can't hit the limiter and take full control. Gear shifts are pretty rapid though. Down or up. And this car feels really sure footed. So you can drive this thing extremely quickly. S3s of old always had like a slightly wooden inert feeling to them, a bit boring, you didn't feel much from them. Whereas this is much better and it doesn't have grip and hook up. It is impressive how this thing handles. They've got it well sorted. Any idiot can drive this car quickly, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. And the engine is strong. Yeah, if you're just cruising around, it can give decent economy. The long-term economy on this car is like 33 miles per gallon. That's all right, that is. Now, I've had the car in sports mode, so it adds weight to the steering, sharpens the throttle response, makes the gearbox a little bit more kind of racy. I can put it into comfort mode, which slackens things off. What this car doesn't have, though, is adaptive dampers. So you can only have adaptive dampers on the S3 if you go for the range topping four sprung model, then it's 44,000 pounds. To be fair, the suspension is fairly decent in this. Yes, it's low and stiffer than a normal A3, so it's not as comfy. But for a sporty edge car, it's not horrendous. You know, you hit a pothole or something like that around town, you will get a bit of a jolt. Over speed humps, it's fine, and over imperfections, it's not too fidgety. 
and the steering it's got that good balance between lightness and heft when you're going quicker it's a very well sorted car it's less in your face as a hot hatch and the ambience of the cabin and general comfort that you get from it in terms of the soundproofing just makes you forget that it's actually a performance car until of course you put your foot down and then off you go it is an impressive package this a lot of motoring journalists will go wah, 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 wah. it's a boring hot hatch you know it's only good in a straight line wah, 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 wah. do you know what Audi knows what it's doing and it knows the kind of audience that this car has people who want to be sat in something that feels premium that's comfortable that has the right badge on the grill yeah when you want to you plant your right foot and it gives you all the performance you need legally I mean sure you lift off mid corner it's not going to adjust its line like something like a Ford Focus ST or a Renault Sport Megane but this is a different car someone who's going oh shall I have a Ford Focus ST probably isn't going to be looking at an Audi S3 more like the other way around someone who's after an Audi S3 isn't going oh shall I have a Ford Focus ST so when they brought it home to their partner they'd be like why have you got a Ford what's happened okay now I've jumped into the Golf so the first thing I notice is that it feels less sporty on the inside better visibility but less cocoon less special more blue another thing I notice is that it's slightly noisier uses the same tires Bridgestone Potenzas this one's actually riding on 18 inch alloy wheels whereas the Audi was 19s yet this has more road noise yet better insulation in the Audi however the Golf fights back with the fact that it is actually more comfortable so over bumps it's dealing with them just that little bit better part of the reason for that will be the fact that it's got 18 inch instead of 19 inch alloys so more tire sidewall but also because this car is fitted with the optional adaptive dampers which you can add to the Golf for around 800 pounds you don't have to go all the way up to the most expensive model and it does help I mean comfort mode and it's really good you would have no idea you were sat in the sporty model if it wasn't for all the blue so for cruising around impressive gearbox that's quite relaxed only occasionally does it sometimes clunk it's the same gearbox that you get in the Audi so that'll do the same thing anyway as for the economy getting like 27 miles per gallon which is less than the Audi even though it should be about the same because basically the same engine so I'm going to put it into sports mode I'm going to press the R button on the steering wheel go to R we're in R Oof. do you know what it feels a little bit more hot hatchy a bit more maybe immature than the Audi it still feels totally planty when you go around corners but then when you accelerate out of them that's noticeable when you floor it you can feel that rear diff doing its thing driving the car through the turn it just seems a little bit more playful a little bit more fun this if the Audi is fine it does the job but you just feel more connected to this Audi is supposed to be the premium sporting brand but I'm telling you I prefer this Golf R and if you want to go on a track day I'd rather be in this more agile more responsive so really if that's your thing you might find something like Mercedes MG A45 S even more fun although unfortunately even more expensive in fact if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car put a link in there click on that you can go watch that video it's even better than the last one I quite like the last Golf R still had like a slightly neutral edge to it but this one just feels more crazy we've got the dynamics more aggressive this time Mr Watson I hope you're enjoying the Golf R that we have created for all the motoring journalists and the engineers together it is the car for you wanted anyway let's launch it now like with the Audi to launch Golf R you need to have the stability in sports mode especially in time in gear all ready to go I'm ready to go launch time 4.5 to beat that hooked up better than the Audi and change gear better oh my god I don't know what to say. 4.05 seconds to 60. <laughs> that is incredible. That is utterly nuts. We destroyed the Audi there. Well, the Audi was sort of struggling for traction and short shifting. This just hooked and <laughs> just revved out. Wow. Let's see what it's like at braking. Finally then, do a brake test. Once again, from 70 miles an hour. Let's see if the Golf can beat the S3 here as well. Right, stop that. Why did it do it in? 
Can't see. 45 metres. Ah, almost. So the Golf goes better, the Audi stops better. So then, what's my final verdict? Well, in an ideal world, I'd have an Audi S3 that drove like a Volkswagen Golf R. They could actually make that possible, but they don't for some reason. And because they don't, and I'm a car journalist, and I'm into how cars drive, I would go with the Golf R, because it's just that little bit more fun. And that's why it wins this test. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. If you want to watch some more videos, which I've carefully chosen for you to watch, click on the windows there. I'd point, but then I'd fall on the floor. Uh, oh, and if you click on the box there, you can go to Carway to see how much you can save on a new car. I don't know why I'm doing this.